Welcome back guys to another episode of Boot or Blue Screen where we troubleshoot PCs and uh, yeah, try to fix stuff. This one's a little bit different. So I actually had somebody reach out. I'm just gonna read to you guys what was said. On Facebook, they said, hello, saw that you sell computers and was looking to upgrade my other PC. I have an older PC that doesn't work. I removed the HDD, does not post, but worked before. I don't know what's up. I'll take $50 for it. If you have any parts, I can buy off you. Now I get these kind of messages all the time where people wanna like trade in stuff. And usually I don't take stuff and I don't take stuff that's like this old. Um, it's starting to get harder for me to sell. But um, yeah, in this case, it's a little bit different. And shout out to Peter, a recent commenter on my last video that said, never buy an untested PC for more than the case is worth is my uh, philosophy. Now I kind of had that same philosophy with this. He sent over a picture and I was like, yeah, I mean, it looks half decent. <laughs> I mean, obviously there's something wrong. He claims that it used to turn on and boot. So we're gonna try and see what's up with it. I already see a few things that are not correct in here. Um, that being said, I think we can try to fix it. So without further ado, let's uh, try to turn it on. So as for specs, I'm actually kind of going in blind. I just went based off the picture that he sent me in chat and I could see the Z270. So this could probably be like an i5 7600K, 7700K. And then we have a gigabyte, which reads 1050 Ti on the back sticker here. So it's a 1050 Ti four gigabyte, which is actually still a decent little tiny budget card. And then we got the 500 watt EVGA power supply. Good for cheap stuff. And we luckily got an IO shield with it kind of half hanging out. Another thing I noticed too, is that this is probably like an office computer. It's got one of these little workstation uh, things here. Desktop 6, 5, 9, 2017. Power switch is already on. That's a good sign. Got some light coming through the back of the board there. All right, power switch. Got some fans spinning up. Can hear this uh, LG disk drive here. That works. So a lot of times people will bring me computers that they claim have issues and then end up not having issues at all. So I was kind of hoping for that to be honest, but we'll find out. I'm gonna take you guys with me. So obviously we are not getting a screen, uh, a post, and we have this yellow light on the motherboard. This yellow light that you're seeing is actually the DRAM light. So the first thing I'm gonna do is try to see if these sticks need to be pushed in. Flick off the switch. So both these sticks feel like they're in all the way. So let's just give it another boot. All right, second try. Still nothing on the screen. All right, so the next move is gonna be taking out that GPU and uh, plug it into the board. I don't think it's gonna matter. We have a DRAM light, so maybe we have a bad memory stick. Um, I'm not sure. I do actually have a spare exact same model memory stick as those in there. I don't know if it's the same speed or uh, cast latency, but we'll check it out. All right, let's get this GPU out. And uh, also one other thing I gotta say, just in case this guy watches this, um, you removed the hard drive, but there is actually an NVMe SSD in here and it's a 250 gig. So if you want that back and you watch this, let me know. Um, I am also gonna mention it, but he kind of was just like, take this thing as it is, get it out of my hair. So, and look at that, tiny little 1050 Ti, awfully clean on this side. Look at how dirty that side is. And then look at how clean this side is. It's kind of funny. Now, I don't think we're gonna get a picture out of this. Um, that being said, I'm just trying this as a troubleshooting method. We already pushed the RAM in. Um, I can change, I can actually take out one of the memory modules. So maybe I'll do that as well. Um, this is real time troubleshooting guys. So yeah, let me take out the middle stick here. Okay. And actually, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna take out both of these sticks. And what we're gonna do is put in my known working sticks and to give you guys some information on the amount to here we have so i actually said 16 gigs here it's actually only eight gigabytes because it's the eight that comes in a split kit of four it's a little bit confusing but all right got the hmi hooked up to the rear motherboard never do this if you have a gpu by the way people do that all the time and oh got the power switch and let's see what happens I'm still seeing that DRAM light. That is weird. Maybe some bent pins again. 
Man, I've had a lot of bent pin boards back to back. Hopefully that's not what it is. Can only really repair sockets so many times before it's like, oh my God. All right, I got a feeling this is not gonna post. Let's take this motherboard out and see what's going on. So a lot of people have been getting mad at me in the videos for using this Makita hand drill. Well, guess what everyone? Now I have one of these little magic things. Let's try it out. That's kind of rewarding. It's funny, I was gonna show you how rewarding it is to get up into these little corners, but the screw is missing from up here. So <laughs> we're not gonna remove that one. Now before we remove all these screws, I should have done this first. It's always a good idea to remove all the cables first because then the board is flopping around. So my mistake. So I started removing it, but I got one screw left. I actually have to take this fan out to get to the eight pin, the uh, EPS four plus four eight pin connector. So let me pop this out real quick. Now that's interesting. Only one of these is plugged in. Um, obviously we got to take out both, <laughs> but it will work with just one on either side if you're curious, but uh, I recommend plugging in both. All right, I'm laying this down so everyone can kind of see better. It's all unscrewed. Now it's time to just take the board out. One other thing I noticed too, by the way, is that this is literally falling off. So uh, I don't know how that was cooling, if they messed around with it when they were trying to figure out what was wrong with it, but let's take the board out. This is one of those tight cases. I'm gonna have to go this way. There you go. Whoa, look at that. You guys see that on the camera? Hold on, let me move it. There is a loose screw right here. Just a tiny screw. I don't even know what this is to. So this little tiny Phillips screw that has no purpose in a computer is uh, sitting behind the motherboard. Really weird. All right guys, what's the guess? What is in the motherboard? Uh, we got some kind of crappy paste application going on here. Looks like somebody tried to repaste it really poorly. And I can already see a six, so I'm guessing it's an i7-6700. And yep, that's what it is. Unfortunately, it's not the K version, but I did not expect to have a K version with that stock Intel cooler. Um, let's check the socket. Pins look pretty good, so I don't think it has anything to do with the pins. I'm starting to wonder if that little tiny screw was shorting something in the case. So I think the plan is gonna to be to leave the CPU in. Um, I'm gonna move the RAM to this slot instead. I know it should be in this slot if it's uh, only a single stick, but we'll check the different slots. Um, the DRAM light is still weird. I and mean, unless there's something on that, the backside was getting shorted out, like maybe that screw was sitting somewhere around here. Um, yep, I'm gonna take this out for now. We'll put it back in after, but let's move it on to this test bench. All right, so we got the original RAM and SSD out. We have my working stick. Now it's time to just see if it boots. I'm still seeing an orange light here. Oh, went away. We got a, we got a post. Overclock, 14%. All right. Uh, I don't know what this is. It quite literally might have been that little screw shorting something on the back. I mean, it was sitting right around this area. Let's try to throw in the original six of memory and see what it does. Also at this age, now is a good time to replace this CMOS battery. So we're gonna put in a new one. All right, moment of truth. Might take a minute because I did change the CMOS battery. Oh, there we go. No, it didn't even reset it. It's still at an overclock. So let's see if the memory shows up. i7 6700 CPU. And it looks like it's only showing eight gigs of memory. That's weird. Oh, we have two four gigabyte sticks. That's why. What do you say we throw the GPU back in? All right, now we have it pretty much in the state that it came in other than the fact that it wasn't working. Let's give it a try with the NVMe and the GPU. And I'm pretty sure we should be good. Like there should be no reason that this doesn't post unless the GPU was bad, but. Yep, works. And let's see what's on that NVMe. 
Recovery, your PC needs to be repaired. Uh-oh, so we got a blue screen of death. <laughs> boot or blue screen. I guess it's kind of ironic that the series is called Boot or Blue Screen, and I've yet to have a real blue screen eight episodes in. So in a situation like this, there's really no reason to even try to fix Windows. We're just gonna reinstall Windows. But um, this is the, oh, turned off. Well, I don't know what that was about, but let's uh, let's just install a fresh copy of Windows and see what happens. So I did go to check the BIOSes here, and 1302 is the latest BIOS for this version, or this board here. So unfortunately, there's no uh, actual real compatibility with Windows 11, but that won't stop us from installing it. I am going to update the BIOS regardless, so let's do that real quick. My eldest cat has developed this new personality trait where she's extremely spicy all the time. Is that you? What are you doing? Shut up, human. Is that a hairball? All right, I'm gonna be transparent with my mistakes here. So we got the Z270A Asus 1302. Z270A, oh, that's an AR. So apparently there's an A and there's an AR. Also one other goofy thing I've been doing is using this header to turn it on when there's actually a power switch on the board. So got the new BIOS loading in and then up next we're gonna do Windows. And for anybody wondering, I did actually apply some proper paste to this. It's not just sitting on there without paste. I'm also gonna leave a link down below for you guys to install Windows 11 on older hardware if you want to. I know 10 is going away. If you're not gonna do the whole enterprise Windows 10 thing, um, you're gonna have to go with 11, sadly. So the trick is basically you open up your command prompt and then you go to the registry editor and you do all these little steps. And it's it's fairly simple. Once you get it the first time, uh, it's, it's an easy thing to figure out. So for whatever reason, I had to use a SATA SSD to install Windows. I kept using this Samsung 960 Evo and five times in a row it failed. I tried every little trick I know. It says it's good here, and I'm gonna do some tests on it, but for whatever reason, Windows 11 would not install on that SSD. I don't know, we'll see what happens. I'm gonna load a few things on it and see if we can, I don't know. I also have this interesting Corsair case that's been kicking around my house. I had a couple of these actually. Um, this one, you guys might remember if you watch one of my recent videos, I had painted one of the panels because I had two different panels. Well, that panel belonged to this case. I don't like how I phrase this here, so I'm using a voiceover. I am moving the hardware into this case instead of keeping the old case. So my attic is absolutely filled with a bunch of these PC cases. So I'm gonna leave this case out with the fans for free. If somebody wants to come pick it up, it'll be there. Off you go to a new home. I rushed back really quick because I was like, did I leave that in the case? Uh, I gotta clean this out real quick and then we're gonna throw the parts into that case. Ah, oh, what kind of thermal paste are we gonna go with today? Let's just do a P-dot. Just a nice, that should do. And we're gonna use this better cooler master cooler, the Hyper 212 Black, or whatever this new one's called. Time to pop the board in. Much nicer case. It's nothing special. I mean, these old Corsair cases, I kind of don't like them too much, but... Now, make sure the fan's facing down on this unit. Uh, it does have top airflow, but it's better to have the air to go out. All right, finally to install the GPU, and this is that annoying cable that I was talking about. Unfortunately, it has to go this way to run to the RGB but luckily there's not too many other cables all going right here. I cut out a boring segment, basically explaining why I'm using the CPU fan on the back, and that's because the RGB does not reach the bottom of the board. All right, guys, time to see if it boots up in the new case, but before I do that, I do actually gotta shout out a another YouTube channel and a friend of mine that lives locally. He goes by the name of X Builds Customs, and he sent over these two Z790 motherboards, which is, these are pretty nice boards. Apparently they have some issues. One of them, the SSD doesn't work. One of them has some weird pins going on or something. So we're gonna take a look at those in another video, but he sent them over completely free. So thanks a lot, bro. I will plug your channel down below, but let's see if this turns on. Pretty positive it will. There we go. Nothing too fancy on the RGB end. Very subtle. And we got a post. That's a $50 PC, ladies and gentlemen. And that case was probably about 20 bucks in a different deal that I got. I do want to repaint this front. The silver looks a little bit off. I don't know. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. So I'm currently installing a bunch of stuff. I gotta say for, for being an old girl, this is actually quite a snappy experience. Um, yeah, it's uh, surprisingly good. 
right now I'm actually installing Cyberpunk, MSI Afterburner, and OBS all at the same time just to see if I can totally stress this system out. So since we have only eight gigabytes of RAM, we're gonna drop in this insane 64 gigabyte 3600 kit so that we can actually test Cyberpunk properly. All right, everybody, so ignore the black bars at the top and bottom of the screen. This is actually some weird resolution Apple cinema display, but I wanted to talk about the settings. We're at the bottom bottom. We're at the lowest possible settings and we have the performance mode of uh, Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2.1 on. So jumping back into the game, the reason why I'm using Cyberpunk is it's still very heavy today. And um, it's, I mean, it's, it's a very optimized game, but it's still very, very heavy. Now this doesn't look great to be honest, but we are seeing like 42, 41 FPS. Let's drop this down to the um, balance preset and see how it looks here. Looks a little bit better. And so just the other day, I was talking with a few friends of mine on a podcast, uh, E Rock on Tech and Danny Z Reviews. Uh, we were talking about what the lowest graphics card you could get away with in playing modern titles. And I'm again using Cyberpunk as a modern title because it's still one of the craziest pieces of tech out there, other than like the new Battlefield 6 and a couple other things that are coming out. But um, other than that, this is. Uh, I hate to say it, but it is playable. 30 FPS isn't playable for the PC Master Race standard. I mean, that's like the 40 to 35 is like the new handheld standard. But if you were strapped and you had absolutely nothing else except for this PC and you wanted to play this game, I mean, you could probably play this game. Is it good again? Oh, this girl's taking out a gun. Uh, it feels okay. I'm mostly used to playing this at at least 60 FPS, but yeah. I would say that we're in a pretty crazy area and it's running okay. All right, I'm gonna get into a firefight. Let's see how low we can dip here. Staying above 30, CPU is hitting like close to 60% usage, which is surprising. It, it does feel a little bit laggy to be honest, but what can I say? We're going to completely turn off. Let's see what we got. Okay, yeah, now we're into the 20s. So FSR is really, you know, helping quite a bit, bringing it up about almost 10 FPS on average. So what do you guys think? Was it this tiny little screw that caused all those problems? Or did it just need to be taken apart and re-put back together? Sometimes that's the case. Sometimes uh, weird things happen like that. Um, other than that, yeah, for $50, I think this was an excellent buy. I mean, the card alone is still worth about 50 bucks, uh, especially on eBay. Something about 1050 Ti's are still valuable. I think it's the no power connector aspect. You can kind of throw it into anything. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the video, guys. Drop a, drop a like, leave a comment, let me know your thoughts. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.